Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice with Castello Wellness and Adventist Health Partners. And today we're going to talk about male pattern baldness, otherwise known as androgenic hair loss. And everybody understands what male pattern baldness is. It's you lose hair on the top of the head, but you retain the hair around the sides. And it's kind of unusual that you could have a 90-year-old guy who's been bald for 50 years, but he maintains the hair on the side of the head. The reason why this happens is, is because the hair follicles on the top or the crown are actually different than the hair follicles on the side. The hair on the top, the hair you lose with male pattern baldness, is sensitive to a chemical called DHT, dihydrotestosterone, which poisons the hair follicles and they fall out. The hair on the side of the scalp is actually not sensitive to DHT, and that's why you don't lose your hair on the side with male pattern baldness. So we'll start with testosterone, which is probably primarily a male hormone, but women have testosterone as well. What happens is, is that testosterone is converted uh, by something called 5-alpha reductase to a chemical called DHT, dihydrotestosterone. So DHT in the fetus is important for developing the male genitalia. It's also important up until puberty in developing male characteristics. After puberty, the two roles of DHT are both bad. They make your prostate grow and enlarge, so benign prostate enlargement, and they also poison your hair follicles causing male pattern baldness. So for an adult male, DHT is bad. We don't want to have DHT. So the first medications we used to specifically treat male pattern baldness was a medicine called finasteride, uh, known as Propecia, also known as Proscar, and what finasteride does is it blocks this 5-alpha reductase inhibitor and it prevents testosterone from being converted into DHT. There's two pathways, 5-alpha um, reductase type, type 1 and type 2, and this finasteride molecule actually only blocks type 2. A more recent drug came out called Avidart, and Avidart's also a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor or DHT blocker, but that blocks both pathways type 1 and type 2. When we give a man finasteride, originally marketed as Propecia, one milligram, um, it blocks DHT production and it helps treat male pattern baldness. Because DHT also regulates your prostate gland, a 5 milligram version of this called Proscar was also developed and was given to men to treat uh, enlargement of the prostate. More is not necessarily better, the 1 milligram is probably okay. What you can do to save money if you're on this medication is the Propecia was $150 a month. It's gone generic and is cheaper now, but the 5 milligram finasteride or Proscar, you can buy 100 of them for about $30 at Costco, cut them into quarters, and about 1 milligram a day of the 5 milligram, same exact drug. Technically speaking, this Avidart should be uh, effective for hair growth. In my personal opinion in the office, guys on Finasteride or Proscar seem to do much better than the guys on the Avidart, even though Avidart blocks both type 1 and type 2. Um, it's also $150 a month, way more expensive. So I would stick with the generic Finasteride in the about 1 milligram range. Uh, very effective. It can take a year or longer before you start to see improvement. Um, it works as long as you're on the medication once you stop the medication, you start to go back and lose hair again, so it's not a retained benefit indefinitely. Um, other medications that we have are one called minoxidil. So minoxidil is a peripheral dilator blood pressure medication. It has nitroglycerin-like effects and it dilates your blood pressure and lowers your blood pressure. Uh, this is an old drug. It's not a very good blood pressure medication, but during the studies, they noticed that a side effect of the medication was uh, hair growth, and in fact, it we don't know why it works. It may increase the circulation to the scalp. We're not sure, but men who took finasteride, excuse me, men who took minoxidil had a thickening of the hair. Because it's a blood pressure medication, it's not good for people that don't have high blood pressure. So the Upjohn came up with a topical version that you're probably familiar with called Rogaine, and that's a two or five percent topical solution of minoxidil. So the same medication you take by mouth, but you just massage on your scalp or use it as a shampoo. And that actually is kind of helpful. Um, it is helpful in both men and women. So this 5-alpha reductase medication and DHT would be for men only. Women are not affected by this. Their hair follicles are different, but both men and women. In fact, I have several women who have done quite well on minoxidil taken orally as well as topically for their hair growth, hair loss. 
women generally lose in a more diffuse pattern. They don't have the receding hairline. So if you see a woman with uh, hair loss, it's different than male pattern. It's all across the top of the head, uh, thin, and it's because it's not DHT related. It's a different mechanism. We're not sure what that mechanism is. Other medications that can be effective, a medicine called aldactone or spironolactone, that's a diuretic. Uh, we don't usually use that because it has some estrogen type effects, so men that take uh, aldactone get some breast tenderness or actually breast enlargement. Women can have some breast tenderness as well, but what it does is it's actually an anti-androgen, so androgen like testosterone, and it decreases the adrenal gland production, especially in women, and women that have PCOS polycystic ovary syndrome, uh, that's an androgen excess, and they actually get hair growth with that. Um, they get other issues with that. So giving a woman um, aldactone can help her block the androgens and for a man it may have some effects but it has more side effects in men. So I generally don't use aldactone. Uh, there's another medication called flutamide uh, which is, well, they consider that a chemical castration that literally takes out all androgens um, almost like castration and you feel terrible and fatigue and you need to have some androgen or testosterone um, so that's not good. I generally would not ever use that medication for anything. A couple of interesting things, ketoconazole, which is an antifungal medication. It's an actually over-the-counter uh, seborrhea medications. Um, has a vasodilating or stimulating effect to the blood circulation to the scalp, and as a topical solution can help not only with uh, fungal infections, but actually can help you grow hair. Uh, caffeine, I did not know, but in reading I found out that caffeine um, actually has hair growth benefits when applied topically, and there apparently are caffeine-containing shampoos, and that's not to wake up your scalp, it's to increase blood flow, and that actually can have some topical benefits as well. The definitive treatment if you have male head or hair loss is to have hair transplant. So what they do is they actually take some of the hair, they take a graft off the back of the scalp, usually like a half inch strip, sometimes six or eight inches long. They take a big piece of hair off, they chop it up into individual hair follicles, they make a thousand or more holes in the front of your scalp and they one at a time take these hair follicles and they push them under the skin like almost putting a seed in and this thing scabs over and within about six months, the hair follicles actually start to grow. Um, we do anywhere from 1,000 up to sometimes 3,000 uh, individual implants. So that's 1,000 pokes in your scalp, 1,000 hair follicles that somebody's separating one at a time and sticking in your scalp. Um, and it runs about $4 per plug. So figure somewhere in the four dollars to $12,000 range. This is permanent hair replacement because these hair follicles on the back are not sensitive to DHT, you won't go bald there. So when we put those follicles here, it's not the location that causes the baldness, it is because of the different types of hair follicles. So those hair follicles don't uh, fall out with age. It's very expensive, it is permanent. Uh, the old fashioned cornrows, they used to take a plug, so you'd put eight or 10 follicles in a plug, and they would plant these plugs in the top of your scalp, and that looked terrible, it looked like doll's hair. Uh, the newer techniques, they do it one follicle at a time, so they literally are putting them one hair at a time, and if you have a skilled technician who does it, they can do a very natural hair replacement. So the mainstay of hair loss for men, male pattern baldness, is a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor medication. Propecia is the brand name, more expensive, one milligram, the generic finasteride Proscar, five milligram cut into quarters is the same exact medication for a tenth of the cost taken every day. Um, the newer medication, Avidart, at this point I don't think it works better. It may work less effective. I don't know why that would be the case, uh, but is much, much more expensive, so I would stick with the finasteride. Um, minoxidil, if you have high blood pressure, for a woman especially, a uh, good option to take it as a pill and you treat your blood pressure and your hair at the same time. Um, topically, Rogaine, so a younger guy or a woman who doesn't have blood pressure issues, doesn't want to necessarily even go to the doctor, can get Rogaine over the counter and it is effective. Um, aldactone, spironolactone, if you have high blood pressure um, and hair loss, then maybe taking spironolactone may be a two-for-one medication. Um, if you have PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, um, it's a definite, ad definite addition uh, to the regime. Topical ketoconazole prescription and over-the-counter effective, and topical caffeine is a shampoo, apparently also effective. So Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.